A thought is hard to fathom in the presence of my King, and with countless ones forgiven, gathered round the throne to sing glory and honor. Worthy is the Lamb. Awesome thing, cause you are God, and to your glory we will worship and abide in your presence there forever. We'll be happy to reside. Glory and
Good evening, church. I'm excited that you can join us tonight. We're going to go through a lesson on God's gifts and talents that He imparts to the church, how we are each blessed with a talent from God, and how we can use that to further God's kingdom. I'm excited that you can join us. Would you please bow with me as we begin in prayer? Father in heaven, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for those watching, Lord. We pray that all of us can dive into your word, that we can engage in the studies that you provided for us in your word, Father. We thank you for the one who is teaching. We thank you for all those who are watching and listening. Father, we pray that we can encourage the body as a whole to re-engage, that we may enjoy this virtual time of study together. And Father, we look forward to the time where we can gather together in person. We ask you to be with those who are struggling at this time for various reasons, Lord. You know exactly who they are and what their needs are. So we ask your hand and your blessing upon them. Father, we thank you and we praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Good evening, church. Here we are again, coming into your homes from the Rio Rancho Church of Christ, Rio Rancho, New Mexico. We're going to continue on with the lesson from God's Word. Tonight, we're going to tie in just a little bit on the lesson we had last week about God's blessings. Tonight, we're going to talk about gifts from God. And the first reference verse is found in 1 Peter 4.10. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Okay, so let's talk about that for a couple of minutes. By the word or the term gifts, what is it that we're talking about? Are we referring to maybe presence? Like with the TS at the end, that someone receives or gives? like around Christmas time, their birthdays, things of that nature. Uh, no, no we're not. The gifts that we're referring to are talents, is another term we can use, that are entrusted to us by God. To be, and those talents are to be used to further the glory of God's kingdom. We should, serve, we should try to serve others based on the spiritual gifts that we ourselves have received from God. Whatever the gift, whatever it may be, it should always be about God, not about you, not about us, not about anyone. It should always be credited to God and used for God's purpose. But then there's some people that you'll come across and they'll say, well, I don't have any talents. I can't do anything. Well, that's not entirely true. Everyone has some type of talent or gift that God provides. Perhaps it just hasn't been discovered yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our second verse. Our, I mean, I'm sorry, our second reference, and that's Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. And that reads, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So, that right there tells us that God gives talents, gives gifts to different people, whatever the case may be, and it's for, like I said, for the furtherance of service and the furtherance of God's kingdom. Like the verse we just read a minute ago, some people are called to be teachers, some are called to be preachers, things of that nature. Um, some of us have a gift for preaching. 
Some of us have a gift for teaching. And what I'm about to say is, I'm not, I'm not going to say it just because he's my son, but this congregation, and I feel, is blessed to have the, the preacher, the minister that we do. Spends a lot of time studying. He's very well spoken. He's articulate. And I've had several, several people from the congregation come up to me at one point or another and tell me that, that we're so blessed to have him as a minister. Anyway, other gifts that people have, other talents that people have, you may have a gift for, for talking, being able to offer advice, being able to be encouraging, being able to offer comfort to someone. And, we, and if that is your gift, then we encourage you to use that. Others are blessed to be able to be song leaders. Me, myself, I can't carry a tune in a bucket, but we have other members in the congregation that are blessed with that talent. So therefore, like I said, God has blessed everyone with some type of talent. No matter how small, no matter how big, it still can be used for God's glory. Now, another talent someone may have is maybe the ability to, to cook a good meal. There's people that are shut in, especially right now. There's people that aren't able to really uh, cook for themselves, provide their own meals for one reason or another, maybe through illness or something like that. So if you're able to have that, that gift of being able to cook and prepare a meal, let's try and do that and maybe bring some cheer to somebody else. Um, Things of that nature. Now, no matter how small of the, the gift you think God has, has given you, use that to the best of your ability. Um, anyway, that's where I point to that direction, where I talk, make reference to gifts and blessings. Everybody has something that, that they can do. Everybody has a talent that is God-given. Now, another uh, Bible reference I want to make reference to in scripture is found in Romans 12 verses 4 through 8 and that reads for as we have many members in one body but all the members do not have the same function so we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us let us use them if prophecy let us prophesy in proportion to our faith or ministry, let us use in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in an exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So we see here, there's a correlation there between the, God, the gifts that God gives, gives us, the gifts that he provides to us. There's a correlation there and a reference to different parts of the body. And we've studied that before. The ear serves one purpose, your eye serves one purpose, so does your hand, your feet, etc., etc. But the commonality in all that is they're all part of one body. Each body part has its own specific function. For example, you don't think of anything, or we don't think of anything at the time, but let's just throw out there your big toe, for example. That is extremely important in our ability to walk, in our ability to maintain our balance. If you don't think so, stub your toe or fracture it or injure it in some manner, and then you realize just how important it is. It's, it's very hard to walk, it's very hard to, to function without that big toe. Um, you know, that's, that's just the way it is, and God provides that. And, and like I said, the example for that is because even though there's different parts of the body that everyone has, each one has a specific function. And each one also complements each other. Each body part complements the other. But as we see in some of these verses, everyone can be of benefit to someone else. We just don't know what the need is yet. So, the, like I said, the talents that you're given, the gifts that you have that freely provided to us by God, Use that. Be of service somewhere to someone. Now, if you happen to be blessed with a high-profile talent or gift, 
use that if you can as a platform to evangelize or bring the word to others uh, having a high profile is not really a necessity but it doesn't hurt if you are blessed like i said with that particular gift one example i throw out there and i've mentioned it in the past is a gentleman by the name of tim tebow here he is one of the greatest college football players that ever played played a few years in the nfl but he used his platform to spread god's word you could see film clips of him on the sideline getting down on a knee and it's not for protesting gets down on a knee praises his god god gives him the talent he says god bless whatever the event was that happened i always hear him saying well praise god praise god for this praise god for that now that had an unexpected consequence because some people weren't ready to be supportive of that um, in the uh, the team administrators people within the league like things of that nature they kind of singled him out because he did draw attention to himself and that's fine it's like the same same kind of example when we go to a restaurant and we have a meal we sit down we give we say grace we give thanks to god for the food that's been provided to us and we shouldn't care it shouldn't matter if the person sitting over here gives us a funny look or the person over there you can tell by their facial expression that it offends them well that's just the way it is we are not going to deviate from what we know we should be doing and that's the same thing that happened with with mr tim tebow he maintained his faith he kept trying to spread the faith to his teammates and i'm sure there was a few that that took it to heart but because of that because of the the showing and the example that he had of his strong faith he was ultimately pretty much kicked out of the the nfl now did he let that um get him down i'm sure he felt a little bad for a while but now he's playing baseball professional baseball so and he's still doing the same thing there he's he's living out his faith he's spreading the word he shows what his faith is not only does he talk the talk but he walks the walk as well so the gifts that you're blessed with the talents that god blesses you with use that ability use those abilities if it's more than one spread god's word be thankful too as well for what god has given you like i said a few minutes ago everyone has some kind of a talent it just hasn't been maybe with some of us it just hasn't come out yet but there's something there god blesses everyone with some kind of skill some kind of gift some kind of talent so it's just that we have to go maybe go through a few things to figure out what it is so with that just keep that in mind god blesses different people to do different things but we should all work in conjunction with each other do things together for the betterment of the community the betterment of the congregation and then spread it all out everywhere you go don't don't keep that bottled in don't think well i can't do anything very well i don't have any skills at all what can i do well there's plenty you can do you just have to maintain and be perseverant um, and there's plenty of biblical figures that that display that one of them was moses he had the excuse that well when god was sending him to go talk to the pharaoh he made the excuse was well i i'm not a good speaker but we all see what happened with that so anyway keep in mind like i said the gifts that god gives us the talents that we have further the the word of god further the kingdom of god regardless of how small your talent you think it is regardless of how small you think your gifts are no matter how small you think you are just one last quick example we have what we call uh, kids for christ here at this congregation and those are kids anywhere from about four or five years old up to about 11 12 roughly that age group once a month we get together with them and they make cards they actually hand make uh, greeting cards and we send those out to people within the congregation people in the community that are probably sick 
birthdays, anniversaries, things of that nature, or even just a card of encouragement. I've had so many people from the congregation come up to me and say, hey, say thank you to so-and-so, or we really appreciate what the kids have done. I received a card today when I was just down in the dumps all morning. I received this handmade scribbly card with a crooked picture or whatever the case may be on it, and that just made my day. I just felt so encouraged. I felt happy. You tell those kids to keep up the good work. And that's what we try to do. Just be of an encouragement, starting with the smaller kids on up. Because we know what's going to happen is that's going to carry on as they get a little bit older. And then as they get older yet, then they become of other service to the congregation and the community. So you never know what you have until you're able to express it. You, you never can be young enough to even start be encouragement to people be a just be that little ray of sunshine so with that we want to thank you once again for taking us into your home and as always if you have any particular need of anything we're always here for you you can contact our minister you can contact any of the elders or the deacons let us know if you have issues or where you need some encouragement or if you need any kind of help. Maybe you just need a, a kind word. We're available and we're here to help you with that. So don't be hesitant. Don't be too proud. And don't feel embarrassed just because you, have, you may have a need somewhere. That's what we're here for, to help and encourage people. So with that, we'll conclude this lesson and we'll be dismissed with a short prayer. Heavenly Father, once again, we're so grateful that we're able to have this avenue to come into people's homes that perhaps can't be here for the, for the classwork, for the lesson work to be, that we're putting on. We thank you for the opportunity. We thank you for the time, and we thank you for the privilege that we're able to do that. And hopefully, like I said, we can be an encouragement. And if there's any other need that someone may have, perhaps that one person will reach out to us, make that contact with us, and we can help them with whatever, whatever issue, whatever problem they feel they may be having right now. And as always, we thank you for life's gifts and blessings. We thank you so much for the gift of your son. And it's through his name we pray. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us this evening. I hope you enjoyed the study. I know I have. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. if you are able to be here. We have in-person worship, and we do conduct it according to the COVID-19 guidelines. But we, we look forward to seeing you if you're able to make it. And for those of you who are just not ready to be here just yet, we want to thank you for joining us online. We want to say thank you for being a part of our virtual family. And we want you to know that although we don't see you regularly, we're thinking about you, we love you, we miss you, and we're praying for you. You're always on our hearts. As we begin to wrap up this evening, I want you to take time in God's Word, to abide in His Word, to be washed by His Word. For that's the only thing that will get us through this week, this day, this year. We love you, church. We're always thinking about you. We can't wait to see you again. We'll see you this Sunday, Lord willing. Have a good night.